Hi everyone, welcome to Andrew Security Center series video number 8. Today we will discuss about implement platform security. I am Ensign Chair, Microsoft MVP. You can find me at my Twitter. If you look for more Andrew Security Center, uh, tutorial, please go to uh, techconnect.io <coughs> This was today's agenda You can go through for it Okay, let's go Every domain name in a GAD either an initial domain name or a custom domain name Azure AD comes with an initial name in the form company on Microsoft.com. The third level domain name, for example, console.onMicrosoft.com, is established when the directory is created. Typically, by the admin who create the directory, the use of custom domain help. Ensure that your internet and external URL are the same. The benefits are as below. Your user will have an easier experience. They don't no need to learn different internet and external URL and track where they are because the same URL will work for them no matter where they are. The link content in application will work without additional configuration. If you if you have hardcore internal link in your application, they might not work when selected if the internal link is not published in the Azure AD application proceed application. And if the link is not external resolved, when the when your URL are the same, you will write this problem. To learn more about option, if you are not able to use a custom domain, refer to the documentation on translating in link inline link. Active directory. Yeah, some configuration will work only if you have a custom domain. For example, you will need custom domain for application to use SAML, such as when you use Active Directory Federation service but can't use the Web Service Federation. For more details, refer to the documentation on claim aware application. You can build user confidence using an MS proxy. The net domain might be unfamiliar for your user, but a custom domain can help build their confidence when accessing your application. Sometimes you need to update your app, or Microsoft need to update the host that your VM are running on. Not that the IIS VM Microsoft does not automatically update your VM. You have complete control for that. But if Microsoft identify a serious security vulnerability and create an update, it is Microsoft interest to apply the update to the host of your VM as soon as possible. How is that done without taking your service online? The answer is by using update domain. It is similar to the default domain method, but instead of an accidental failure occurring, a purposeful move to take down one or more of your server occurs. To make sure your service does not go offline because of an update, this method goes through your update domain one after the other. To provide redundancy to your application, Recommend that your recommend that you group two or more VM in an availability set. This configuration within a data center help ensure that during a plan or unplanned maintenance event, at least one VM will be available and it meet the 99.95% Azure SLA. The underlying Azure platform assign an update domain and a fault domain to each VM in your availability set. For any particular availability set, the platform assign five of the domains that are not user configurable by default. This update domain indicates group of VMs and other underlying physical 
However, there can be research and the same time. When more than 5 VM are configured between a single OVD site, the 6 VM is placed into the same update domain as the first VM, the 7 VM in the same update domain as the second VM, and so on. <laughs> As discussed earlier in this video, serverless computing is, uh, is, is the assertion of server infrastructure and operating system. When you build serverless app, you don't need to provision and manage any server. Serverless computing is driven by the reaction to event and trigger happening in near real time in the cloud. As a fully managed service server management and capacity planning are invisible to the developer and building, it's based just on resources consumed or the actual time your code is running. Azure functions are an example of serverless application. This function can power a single page app. The app call function using the webhook UI, save user data, and decide what data to display, or do simple customization such as changing and targeting by calling a function and passing it user profile information. There are multiple ways to update Azure function. One of the simplest and direct way is using put statement. Performing a put operation on a specific Azure user defined function, UDF resources, replace the entire UDF resources. All user acceptable property include, including the ID and the body, must be submitted in the body to perform the placement. Another method for deploying and updating your function is using app services, continuous integration, function integrate with Bitbucket, Dropbox, GitHub, and Azure Devform. This enables a workflow where function code update made by using one of these integrated services trigger deployment to Azure. Continuous deployment is a great option for projects where multiple and frequent contributions are being integrated. It also lets you maintain source control on your function code. An enterprise use serverless architect to both build and deploy software and service without the need for in-house physical or virtual server. Serverless completely moves the responsibility for server management from the application owner to the platform provider. <coughs> this helps eliminate security issues like server with known security vulnerability that have not been updated and made BOS more a building issue than a security issue. However, security issue and chance to consider still assist service computing. <coughs> this, more, this module discussed and shared responsibility model was earlier. Serverless computing shift even more responsibility to the cloud provider. You, still, you are still responsible of your application code. Poly, poly writing code is not secure. You are also responsible for data management, data encryption, identity management, authentication, authorization, and configuration of service and RBSE. Application level vulnerability continue to be served with best front. Mitigation technique are as critical as ever. Application dependency are like explore and server dependency. They are widespread and downloaded frequently by developers. It's hard to check which package you are using, and they are often vulnerable with new vulnerability disclosed regularly. <coughs> a container image is a lightweight standalone executable package that includes everything needed to run an application. It includes the app, system tools, system library, setting for the application, and more. Container different from hypervisor based virtual machine in that they run on single copy of an operating system that running on the hub. When app is contain containerized, the app and the component needed to run the app combine in a single image. 
<coughs> container are then created from this image as in the company can use image as a baseline and build on them to create other image, making subsequent image creation faster. Also, multiple containers can share the same image, which allow container to start very quickly and use fewer resources. Auto container has assisted for the company like Docker have popularized the approach of container image and container management, making them viable in today data center. Historically, historically, container technology was exclusively implemented on Linux-based operating system. But in the past few years, other modern operating systems like Microsoft Windows Server have embraced container technology. In turn, the container development community has embraced Windows Server. Okay, that's all for today. If you got any question, you can tweet me, message me in my Twitter. For today video blog, you can refer to dev.co slash Jameson.